right, g'day, hi, and welcome. About to make the boldest statement ever after I hit all these potholes. But, the overhead cam engine, oh, the bounce off the road, is superior to the push rod engine. If we were talking about cars, this statement would be true. But, when it comes to trucks, although they're like Ford, uses overhead cams, right? Get lots of power out of that. But most diesel engines are still push rod, right? Most uh, truck engines are still push rod. Why? If overhead cams gives you better, um, you know, like smoother RPMs, smoother running, lower maintenance, um, a lighter engine for more power developed, uh, why would the overhead cam engine not be superior on a truck? Well, it comes down to torque. So you could build a lot more horsepower with an overhead cam engine because you can rev it higher a lot easier, right? Uh, you're only restricted by your rev limiter. Where on a push rod engine, there's just, you know, a push rod can only move so fast, right? before it just like shreds itself to death, right? Um, so when you start getting the RPMs low revving, okay, the push rods are kind of like a steam train. They, they can move slower and still maintain all that force. They don't need extreme high RPMs to get that torque, right? And they could take the loadings. Uh, meaning when you're pulling a trailer, or you're trying to get yourself out of mud bog, whatever. You can put that low end torque more usably on the, the push rods because the linkage is technically, although more numerous and more uh, areas for failure, when working properly, actually is more reinforced and just stronger. What happens with the cams on uh, overhead cams is once you load up the engine the cams themselves are fine but the torque on the chains from the crankshaft really puts extra strain on the chain which then uh, torques one end of the cam the way I understand it I could be complete someone else goes in Reggie you're on glue you don't know what you're talking about uh, but the way I understand it is that it will torsion the back end of the cam, which then you eventually wear out the bushings quicker on the back end of the cam, uh, which then you end up wrecking your cams, right? Because you have to rev so high to get the same amount of torque, where on the push rod you don't have to rev as high to get the same amount of torque, uh, is the way I understand it. So you want to develop big horsepower, uh, overhead cams fine, but if you want to be able to manage the torque You typically got to go with a push rod now that said it depends on the application if we're talking a dragster um, You know you're, you're going for max RPM torque slingshot effect, you know, you're going for the high end, right? So that you're gonna see mixed technology there uh, if we're talking about a race car you want the thing as light as possible, uh, so you're, you're even though you're developing a lot of torque, you don't have you're not pulling anything, right? So you're not you don't have the, you have a lot of torque, but you don't have a lot of load. Whereas a truck, let's say like a dually, a diesel dually, you're gonna have a lot of load behind it, you know, and that's gonna have to have a lot of reinforcement to be able to handle that load. Uh -huh. That's why we still have uh, push rod engines. Uh, but that said, the overhead cams are, once they solve that problem, by that time we'll be into all electric vehicles anyway, which will be masters of the torque, right? Like, like the Ford uh, F-150 Lightning is a torque monster. Uh, it's just, it, it's mixed 
whether it'll get long enough range or not. And here's the Ditch of Doom again. I don't see anybody taking him up on that job. You know, he should have just paid me. Should have just paid me, buddy. <laughs> Would have done a lot better. Too late now. I'm all booked up for the season. That was a nasty job. That was just a hateful job anyway. Oh, just miserable, especially when it's hot. He's got to do it with a raincoat on because there's wild parsnip in there. Um, so, ah, total gridlock. Yeah, so I think that the technology, if it is allowed to develop, like I don't, I think we're a long way before we really have electric uh, trucks that are actually, you know, really, you know, usable. Because it's like, you got the guy who buys the, the F-150 Lightning, electric Lightning, he, uh, you know, goes 600 kilometers or about 400 miles or whatever on a single charge, pulling a bunch of cattle on flat ground. No problem. That's a great truck. Uh, the second he starts hitting hills, he gets like 100 kilometers. The second he starts getting, uh, you know, like really working the truck, uh, you know, for torque, stop and go, stop and go, you know, like all heavy load takeoff. Uh, not meaning like, uh, you know, flooring it or anything like that, but like where you have to stop and then get up to speed again. Um, I think once you get into that, then, you know, the, the electrics just can't, they can't do it. You know what I mean? And again, it's, it's still that, uh, thing about, um, oh, see if that girl's there again. I'll say hi to her again. Uh, I, I still think that it's like, um. What you call it? Uh, you know, like like the 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 battery just isn't there. You know what I mean? Like it, it just can't take the hot load. And there's a lot of things I'm learning about electric vehicles too. Now, mind you, I'm not against the technology. I know it's controversial, whatever. But uh, well, at least her job is easy. She just gets to stand here. Eh. She's even cuter with the sunglasses on, too. That is a pretty girl. Uh, see how she nodded at me? She was checking out my GoPro on my head. I probably look ridiculous, but still. Um, but she's probably, oh, that's a nice truck. Yeah, I could, look, I could overlook the funny looking guy, but that's a nice truck. I have to be with him. I'm sure that's what she's thinking. If she hasn't forgotten about me already. We'll, we'll see. Uh, anyway, I gotta go cut grass, so. Uh, but yeah, so like, there's a lot of issues that come up with electric vehicles that we don't know. And there's one that is, it just kind of brought to my attention is that how harmful is it sitting above batteries that are on all the time? You know what I mean? Your, your, your family jewels are sitting above an electrical field, field coil. Like, is that going to cause to stick? either cancer and ovarian cancer and like all you know leukemia and kids like we don't know this yet because they're fast tracking all the electric vehicles without testing them properly right and now for years people have been uh oh look at that that is cool that is really that was a cool truck not as cool as this truck that was still a cool truck but there's like a lot of uh you know People were like, oh, you know, the, the oil companies are holding back electric cars from us. They've been saying, as soon as electric cars come along, ah, oh, it's uh, child labor, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Now, I don't jump on stuff like that bandwagon right away. Yes, there is issues with the batteries catching fire because it's not tested properly. I really don't think anybody that is rational is really truly against uh, electric vehicles. It's just you can't force it out there. Um, it's, but we also know some of the nefarious plans. Oh, wow, we got to cut that grass soon. We could have cut that today, but... Uh, oh, this is going to be fun. Turn it into here. I don't know if they're home or not, but we'll find out. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, squeeze. Don't knock over the cone. Oh, they should be home. Good. There we go. Uh, uh. All right, anyway. We'll continue this conversation 